The city of Hakodate, located on the southeastern portion of the Oshima Peninsula, had, in 1802, been designated by the shogunate as the capital of Ezo, later being opened to foreign trade in 1855. And, because of the city's growing importance, a decision was made to build a fort specifically designed to repel foreign invaders. Modeled on Western-style fortifications, the five-pointed star fortress of Goryokaku was completed in 1864, and just a few years later it saw military action, but not against the Russians. Rather, it was the site of a final confrontation of a larger conflict between forces loyal to the Tokugawa shogunate and those in support of the Meiji Emperor, the Boshin War. For more episodes like The Republic of Ezo, be sure to subscribe down below, click the bell for all notifications, and yeah, that, that's it. The Tokugawa shogunate, which had ruled Japan since roughly 1603, was by the mid-19th century considerably weakened. Its public support waned following the opening of Japanese ports to foreign ships, along with other controversial policies, which in turn fueled the growth of social movements like Sono Joi, literally, revere the emperor, expel the barbarians. Then, in 1867, following the sudden death of Emperor Komei and accession of the 15-year-old Mutsuhito, later known as the Meiji Emperor, things came to a head. A growing number of nobles and young samurai, known as Shishi, discontent with the shogunate, began the push for imperial restoration by force. This was particularly true among the domains of Choshu and Satsuma, who later formed the so-called Satcho Alliance, which despite initially being outnumbered 3 to 1, managed to defeat the shogunate's forces in a battle near Kyoto in January 1868. Things fell apart rather quickly for the shogunate after this, and following another defeat in March, imperial forces surrounded Edo. That April, Katsu Kaishu, a high-ranking retainer of the shogunate, offered the city's unconditional surrender. Some loyalists of the shogunate resisted the imperial takeover, but following the Battle of Ueno, in which 2,000 shogitai, elite samurai shock infantry, made their last stand, the city was pacified. The emperor then left Kyoto, seat of the Japanese imperial court since 794, taking up residence in Edo Castle, which remains the imperial palace to this day. On September 3, 1868, the city of Edo was officially renamed Tokyo, meaning Eastern Capital. But the Boshin War was not yet over, and some of the now defeated shogunate's forces fled northward, eventually arriving on Ezo. This included Enomoto Takeaki, an admiral from the Tokugawa shogunate's navy, who along with eight warships, several thousand troops, and a handful of French military advisors, reached Hakodate that December. Born to a samurai family in service of the Tokugawa clan, Enomoto was one of the country's first naval officers to study abroad, having been sent to the Netherlands when he was just 26 years old to study Western naval warfare techniques. He spent five years in Europe before returning to Japan aboard the Kaio Maru, a frigate powered by both sail and steam, purchased by the shogunate as part of a larger naval modernization effort. Okay, so before going forward, just a quick note about names here. Pretty much every source nowadays refers to the polity up north as the Republic of Ezo, but this name almost certainly wasn't used by those involved. Because of this, you might see other names like the Ezoshima government, the Hakodate government, and even the Republic of Hokkaido. A good part of this confusion stems from exactly what Enomoto and other loyalists were trying to do. In their eyes, this wasn't some breakaway republic per se, rather it was a last-ditch effort to safeguard the Tokugawa clan, its retainers, and their way of life from a wave of modernity then overtaking Japan. Furthermore, it was a means to solidify the nation's territorial claims on Ezo, which as demonstrated in the last episode were not as unchallengeable as they are today. Also, with a few possible exceptions, the so-called Republic of Ezo either used the black and white ensign of the Tokugawa shogunate or the Hinomaru. For purposes of differentiation from imperial forces, I decided to go with this design, which incorporates the seal used by Enomoto himself. You might have also seen this flag online in a few places, and well, it's almost certainly a modern reinterpretation of the Hokkaido Colonization Office or Hokkaido Development Commission's flag which prominently featured a star in various designs, as you see on screen right now. 
Anyway, Enomoto petitioned the newly established Meiji government to send the Tokugawa family member to govern Ezo. They not unexpectedly refused, and he in turn established his own provisional government, headquartered at the former Hakodate Bugyo's office in Goryokaku. As part of this governmental experiment, and seeing how elections had proven effective in countries like the United States, the first democratic elections in Japan were held on Ezo, although voting rights were limited only to members of the nobility and samurai class. Enomoto found himself elected president, and Matsudaira Taro, a distant relative of the shogun, became vice president. From the start, Enomoto was assisted by a small group of French military advisors, most notably an army officer named Jules Brunet, who alongside commander-in-chief Otori Keisuke and vice commander Ishikata Toshizo helped organize and train the military forces on Ezo. This greatly concerned Meiji officials back in Tokyo, who feared the Russians might support the government on Ezo. And, for his part, Enomoto did seek foreign backing, even ceding some land to Germany for 99 years in hopes of receiving support from Berlin. The Germans, though, later ceded it back in the early 1870s. Still, there was considerable uncertainty among foreign powers over how exactly things would turn out. The imperialists had control of Japan proper, but Enomoto likely could successfully repel an attack on Ezo. This assessment was reinforced by the fact that the rebels had control of one of Japan's most powerful ships, the previously mentioned Kaiyo Maru, which unfortunately for them sank in a storm that November. In another turn of bad luck, the Meiji government shortly thereafter acquired the European-built, American-owned warship Stonewall. Originally built for the Confederacy, this ironclad was later obtained by the United States after the conclusion of the American Civil War. It was then purchased by the Tokugawa shogunate in 1867 and renamed Kotetsu, but only arrived in Yokohama following the start of the Boshin War. The Americans thus refused to deliver the ship and rather declared their country's neutrality in the struggle then ongoing in Japan. Following the fall of Edo, though, this neutrality was rescinded in February 1869 and the ship joined the Meiji fleet. That spring, it was sent north to assist Imperial forces in what was to become the war's final campaign. In anticipation of this, Enomoto dispatched three warships under the command of Kaiten, a paddle corvette originally purchased from the Prussian Navy, which now served as the fleet's flagship. The plan was to catch the Imperial fleet, then still preparing for a push into Ezo by surprise in Miyako Bay, Mutsu Province, modern Iwate Prefecture and, if possible, seize the coveted Kotetsu, thereby buying time for forces back on Ezo and or allowing for negotiations by the polity on more favorable terms. To sow confusion, the Ezo fleet planned a false flag operation, with Kaiten entering the bay under an American flag. But there were problems from the start, with one of the ships becoming separated en route and having to return to Ezo, while another, the Takao, was delayed because of a storm. Still, Kaiten managed to enter Miyako Bay without incident before raising the black and white banner of the former shogunate and ramming itself into the Kotetsu. Its men then attempted to board the enemy ship. Despite the initial surprise though, Imperial forces were still able to push back the attackers through use of a Gatling gun. The Kaiten, now pursued by the Imperial fleet, made for a quick exit, which in yet another unfortunate turn of events occurred at the exact moment the Takao was entering the bay. Too slow to outrun its pursuers, the ship was scuttled by its crew, who themselves were later captured. Two weeks later, some 7,000 Imperial forces, led by Kuroda Kiyotaka, future Prime Minister of Japan, landed on the west coast of the Oshima Peninsula in April 1869, then split into three groups which converged on Hakodate. As this occurred, the Imperial Navy hammered coastal fortifications and following several days of naval engagements with the Ezo fleet, secured the waters around the peninsula. The Kaiten, which had survived the battle at Miyako Bay, was grounded along the northern Mutsu, modern Aomori Prefecture coast, its crews setting it afire to prevent it being captured by enemy forces. In all, the Ezo Navy had managed to sink only one Imperial warship. Ishikata, one of the last of the shogunate's famed Shinsegumi, the so-called New Select Brigade, seeing the island's defense was not going well, composed a death poem, before riding out in one last defensive sortie, during which he was killed in action. Quickly finding themselves overwhelmed, Enomoto's remaining forces retreated to Goryokaku, 
However, they were soon surrounded and besieged when Imperial forces entered the city from behind their current position. Having lost close to half their numbers and seeing the futility of the current situation, Enomoto surrendered to Imperial forces on June 27, 1869. As much as one-third of Hakodate now lay in ruins, the bodies of at least a thousand samurai remained where they had fallen in defense of Ezo, but the Boshin War was at long last over. Enomoto was jailed on charges of high treason, but owing largely to an appeal for clemency by Kuroda, he was pardoned in 1872. He eventually made the rank of Vice Admiral in the Imperial Navy, and later, in 1875, was sent to Russia to negotiate the signing of the Treaty of St. Petersburg, which saw Japan acquire the whole of the Kuril Islands in exchange for ceding its territorial claims on Sahalin. Five years later, Enomoto became Navy Minister and would go on to hold a series of other high-level posts in the Meiji government. For his part, Kuroda went on to be named Director of the Hokkaido Development Commission and eventually became Japan's second Prime Minister in 1888, overseeing the promulgation of the Meiji Constitution. Otori Keisuke, Ezo's Commander-in-Chief, likewise was jailed before eventually being released in 1872. He then served the Meiji government as ambassador to Qing Dynasty China and Joseon Dynasty Korea, later playing an instrumental role in the opening of the First Sino-Japanese War. Jules Brunet, who seeing the impending defeat of the Ezo forces during the Battle of Hakodate had fled, eventually returned to France via Saigon, where, despite facing a six-month suspension for leaving his post, he was soon reinstated and went on to have a successful military career. Despite calls for his punishment by Meiji officials, his image was rehabilitated by Enomoto, and he went on to receive the Order of the Rising Sun from the Japanese Embassy in Paris. His story later would be adapted, not without creative liberties, mind you, into that of Captain Nathan Elgrin in the 2003 movie The Last Samurai. And with that, the story of the Republic of Ezo came to a close. Hey, thanks again for watching this episode of Ghost Countries. If you liked the episode, you know, feel free to give it a like, comment, and if you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel. Personally, I find the history of Hokkaido and the Republic of Ezo, along with how this tied into the Boshin War and the Meiji Restoration, just an absolutely fantastic bit of Japanese history that, I know I say this a lot, all too often is overlooked. It was a watershed moment for Japan. You had the clash of the traditional order, that of the shogunate, with that of modernity, the Meiji Restoration. And I think in many ways that's why a film like The Last Samurai is so compelling, this clash of eras. Moreover, it had real-world implications. This wasn't just a change of government in Japan, it was a complete societal change. Economics, politics, the military, and it would change how Japan interacted with other countries in the region and internationally. Also, going back an episode, looking into the history of the Ainu and Hokkaido itself, it's just so fascinating to see the depth of a country like Japan and look into these various groups and their histories and their stories and how everything came to be as it is today. And on that note, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any other recommendations for ghost countries in Japan or Asia in general that you'd like us to explore, please make a comment, recommend it, and uh, more than likely we'll make a video about it at some point. Anyway, peace!